Under assault by lawmakers from across the country, organized labor is fighting back. This year, it's giving politicians an ultimatum. Sign what they're calling the second bill of rights or face the consequences in November. The pledge calls for better wages and protections for the for unionized workers. Joining the panel now to talk about the future of labor is Daniel Katz, Dean of the School of Labor Studies and Dean of the School of Professional Studies at National Labor College. He's also the editor of Labor Rising, the Past and Future of Working People in America. Great to have you on the program. Thanks, Alex. Um, we were just debating the uh, Made in America scandal engulfing the U.S. Olympic team uniforms, but it is a good segue to the notion of unions um, and the power of labor in the U.S. We know now in 1983 uh, there was a 20.1 percent membership in unions across the country. 2011, that's dropped in half, basically, to 11.8 percent. Um, only one in 12 of those aged 16 to 34 are in a union. Tell us about that decline in union membership. Well, the decline in the union membership over the last 30 years uh, has a number of causes, one of which is the deindustrialization that begins in the 1960s, 1970s, as the governor alluded to in the discussion earlier, is that um, uh, you had a uh, um, number of industries, including the garment industry, flee the United States and flee unionization for other places around the globe, Mexico, in the auto industry went to Mexico and other places as well. Um, at the same time, you had an assault by uh, the Republican right. Uh, Ronald Reagan fired the 11,000 air traffic controllers in 1981. A line um, in the sand vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the federal government and unionized labor. Yes, absolutely. Um, and so the decline of manufacturing, the assault on, uh, on unions that uh, begins in the 80s but continues right up to this day with uh, Governor Scott Walker in Wisconsin, um, there's no question that, union, that unions have been retreating, but they've also been fighting back. Um, what, what's interesting is if you look at sort of younger attitudes towards unions, and you have a quote from Michelle Chen, um, or I, we have a quote from her essay in your yeah. book, which is, declining unionization rates are a symptom and a cause of declining quality of life. Youth aren't naturally apathetic. There's no shortage of awareness or even anger at everyday issues like income inequality, lack of health care, or underemployment of highly educated workers. What's missing is brand recognition, which I thought, I mean, is, is very telling. I mean, you say unions and people think, oh, they were good for my parents' generation, but, you know, we don't need them now, or you know, it coupled with the narrative that is exist that is very much furthered on the state level, which is unions are the root of all of our fiscal problems. And so, when we have to cut, we're going to cut on the backs of workers. That's right. Well, it, uh, I mean, that that is the narrative that's uh, that, that some people are saying. But anybody in the earlier conversation uh, who's uh, suffering so badly that they are depending on food stamps for. Mm -hmm their sustenance knows that uh, the pathway to um, to food and, and to uh, a stable life and a middle class life is through unions. Um, and in fact, uh, when young people are asked, uh, they do participate in and join unions. And we have a number of uh, recent exciting examples. Occupy Wall Street was very much uh, a populist movement, left-wing populist movement that involved unions everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and you have, uh, right now, you have hundreds and hundreds of of college students involved in the union summer at the AFL-CIO, Unite Here, a number of other unions uh, around the country. Uh, and so when young people are asked to be involved and given the, the pathway to, uh, to be involved in unions, they do. But, there's the, but I agree that there is a need for a brand recognition uh, among youth. I mean, well, the, the, other, the other interesting thing is if you actually look historically at sort of declining wage rates, you can track a declining, the stagnation of middle class wages right alongside declining power of the union. So That's correct. There hasn't been really a, a, a real increase in wages in like 30 years. Uh, yeah. and, and we know, unless you're talking about the very top 1% or 10% where it's been hundred, sometimes thousand fold, depending on which part of uh, the American economy you're talking about. It is an important subject, a really very interesting read, Labor Rising. The book is is again, Labor Rising, the Past and Future of Working People in America. Daniel Katz, thank you, sir, for your time. My pleasure. Thank you. After the break, 